Coming up on Mountain News at 530, with the deadline to end the COVID-19 national emergency looming, federal money may no longer be available for treatments. What that could mean for you, coming up. Plus, a Chinese balloon has been spotted over U.S. land. What is it, and why is it still in the sky? Plus, cold air continues as we head into tonight and early tomorrow, but better weather on the way. Breaking it all down coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts right now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. Tonight we begin with some developing news out of Prestonsburg. Here's what we know so far. Kentucky State Police Trooper Michael Coleman confirmed there was a trooper involved shooting in Floyd County earlier this afternoon. US 23 is currently shut down near the Allen red lights to the Kentucky 80 interchange. The road is expected to be shut down for several hours. Our buddy Forbes is on the scene, so let's take a look at the area right now. What, are, what you are seeing here is traffic further down the road. Our camera is set up near the double quick in Allen, which is located at the intersection. At least two fire trucks from the Allen Volunteer Fire Department are at the scene. Kentucky State Police are there as well. The scene where the actual incident took place is further up the road, but for safety reasons, this is as close as we can get. For anyone traveling in the area, officers are recommending you use Kentucky Route 1428 as a detour. Our buddy Forbes is there, and we will continue to update you as we know more. COVID-19's national emergency has a deadline. President Biden wants to see the public health crisis officially come to an end May 11th. It means federal dollars will no longer pay for tests, treatment, or vaccines. WIMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to Kentucky's public health commissioner on what this could mean for you. If you need treatment for COVID-19 after May 11th, the costs could come to you or your insurance. The bigger issue may be for people who want to access treatment where it won't be purchased by the federal government most likely going forward. Uh, people have to use their private uh, or, or uh, public health insurance in order to help uh, pay for those medications. President Biden has set May 11th for the deadline, but that doesn't mean COVID-19 will no longer be a health threat. Right, so we're three years into this pandemic, and at this point in time, COVID is here with us to stay. We are solidly in the living with COVID phase. The emergency ending also impacts more than 200,000 who were eligible for Medicaid because of the pandemic. They may now be eligible for other types of assistance. Anybody who doesn't qualify for regular Medicaid or Medicare should qualify for one of the plans on our state-based exchange called Connect. Some in Washington want the national emergency to end a lot sooner, possibly even immediately. Kentucky Congressman Brett Guthrie has filed the Pandemic is Over Act. I don't think that it is in the best interest of the people of Kentucky for that emergency to end sooner. I think we should now thoughtfully and responsibly execute towards that deadline of May 11th. And that doesn't mean COVID will no longer infect people or cause deaths after May. I mean, every week we're announcing 40 to 60 deaths on average from COVID. So it is still having a substantial impact and it's still year round. It has not yet become something more like the flu that typically happens only in the winter and cooler months. He says the difference is now that we can manage it a lot better. Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Dr. Stack also says the national emergency ending could mean changes for some people who took advantage of the WIC food program during the pandemic. Weather-wise, we continue to be on the quiet side outside. Plenty of blue sky and sunshine. The only issue is it's been rather chilly throughout the region. Here's a look outside from Buffalo Mountain in southern Perry County where the sun is setting. A beautiful scene there as we drop to 30 degrees after a not-so-warm day around the mountain. Still sunshine in Somerset, but still cold there as well with temperatures right around 30. Temperatures, again, everywhere, right around freezing or so, with those wind chills making it feel 
uh, colder in some spots. A wind chill right now of 18 in Wise, 19 in Pikeville, 25 in Hazard. So some chillier air continues to work on in. We're all quiet throughout the mountains right now. You got to go up into portions of the northeast before you run into any potential snowfall. So as we head into tonight, we're quiet, but we are cold. Temperatures in the upper teens as we head into tonight. Details in a few minutes, Olivia, on when things get a little warmer around these parts. That's in a few minutes. Thank you, Evan. The Pentagon says a Chinese balloon being used for surveillance is flying some 60,000 feet above the central U.S. and is now heading east. As the situation unfolds, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has postponed a high-stakes diplomatic mission to China that was set for this weekend. CBS's news correspondent Willie James Enman reports from Washington. The Pentagon says the Chinese balloon has changed course and is flying high above the central U.S. and heading east. This is a surveillance balloon, uh, hover, you know, operating at about 60,000 feet. Um, clearly, you know, we did a, a very close assessment in terms of uh, what it's doing. Defense officials expect the solar-powered object to remain over the nation for several more days. I think what makes this different different is uh, the duration and the length uh, of which it has been over uh, U.S. territory. The balloon was spotted in Montana, home to a nuclear missile site. Washington is rejecting Beijing's claim it was for weather research and that wind blew it off course. The balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law, uh, which is unacceptable. And so we've conveyed this directly to the PRC at multiple levels. In a statement, the Chinese Foreign Ministry expressed regret over what it called the unintended entry into U.S. airspace, saying it has limited self-steering capabilities. The incident involving two of the world's major superpowers is already showing signs of increasing tensions with China. Secretary of State Antony Blinken postponed a trip to Beijing this weekend for high-level meetings. It's an irresponsible act and that the PRC's decision to take this action on the eve of my planned visit is detrimental to the substantive discussions that we were prepared to have. Officials ruled out shooting down the balloon, citing potential danger from falling debris. They say it does not pose a threat to people on the ground as many look up trying to spot it. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Washington. A U.S. official tells CBS News a Chinese balloon has never been over the middle of the country before. The source says Florida once had a brief overflight as well as Hawaii. Two U.S. officials say Secretary of State Antony Blinken has postponed his upcoming trip to China. The change in this response to the suspected Chinese spy balloon flying over the continental U.S. China said Friday the civilian airship was used mainly for weather research and accidentally deviated from its planned course. The Pentagon has been tracking the balloon for days. This month mar marks one year since Russia invaded Ukraine. Officials say the Kremlin is preparing for a new offense by gathering hundreds of thousands of Russian troops along the border. At this point, the U.S. has given Ukraine more than $110 billion in humanitarian, financial, and military aid since the beginning of the war. Together with our allies, we're providing support to the Ukrainians in their fight for freedom. Today, the U.S. State Department confirmed another nearly $2.25 billion in security assistance. President Biden is expected to reiterate the U.S.'s support for Ukraine during his State of the Union address next week. The judge in the murder trial of a prominent South Carolina attorney ruled that prosecutors can present evidence that Alex Murdaugh reportedly stole money. The former chief financial officer of Murdaugh's law firm tested without the jury present Thursday, it's telling how she confronted Murdaugh about a trial of missing funds on the morning his wife and son were killed. His lawyers say it's absurd to suggest that this is linked to the murders. Scott McFarland has the latest from Walt, Walt, Walterboro, South Carolina. Just hours before his wife and son were murdered in June 2021, Alec Murdoch, the now disbarred attorney in a storied family, was, according to testimony, confronted about missing money. We made him resign. Jeannie Seconder, the chief financial officer of Murdoch's firm, testified Thursday nearly three quarters of a million dollars were unaccounted for and were supposed to have been handed over to the firm after a legal settlement. I told him that I had reason to believe that he had received the funds himself and that I needed proof that he had not. Received those fees himself? Yes. And I needed proof that, that they were not? Yes. 
What did he tell you? He told me again that he assured me that the money was there and that he could get it. However, the jury hasn't heard this allegation yet. The judge is yet to rule on its admissibility. Prosecutors argued in opening statements Murdoch killed his wife and son to divert attention from the impending storm of financial crimes. The defense maintains Murdoch had no reason to kill his family. Jurors have seen and heard a series of other allegations in testimony this week, including from a Murdoch family friend who identified Alex Murdoch's voice in a video recorded by Murdoch's son. Prosecutors say it was recorded here minutes before the murder. Prosecutors also showed a social media video they say indicates Alec Murdoch was wearing clothes shortly before the murder, different than the freshly clean clothes officers saw him wearing when they arrived. This trial is expected to last several weeks. Murdoch is also accused of a series of financial crimes. His name is not on the witness list for the defense. Scott McFarland, CBS News, Walterboro, South Carolina. Murdoch faces 30 years to life in prison if convicted of murder. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, some businesses are trending up when it comes to new hires, but others are continuing to decline. What industries are being hit the hardest coming up? Plus, we've got cold air in place now, but better weather is on the way into the weekend. The very latest coming up.